Hello and welcome to Extending ASP.NET MVC using the Spark View Engine Part 3. In Part 1, we looked at downloading, installing, configuring the Spark View Engine using the Nerd Dinner ASP.NET MVC sample as our start point. In Part 2, we then looked at replacing the Home Controller Index View, the home page for the site, with the Spark View Engine equivalent. What I'd like to do in this video is just take that one step further and replace one of the other pages which has uh, a little bit more um, complexity to it and uh, show you how to do that using the very succinct syntax in Spark. We've already in part two set up the master layout, the equivalent of the master page and also our partial view for the login status control. So I won't go over those things again. If you're interested in the equivalents to master pages and the equivalents to partial views in Spark, then go and have a look at part two of this video. Uh, in part three, though, we're going to focus on the index view of the dinner controller. So here's the existing page that we're targeting to build a, a Spark view. Um, this is the index view on the dinners controller. And what it does is provide a list of all the upcoming dinners. So it does a query against the model and the view is passed a list of dinners for those dinners to be displayed and they're just written out in an unordered list here. So we're going to try and build a Spark view that does the same thing. And here we are in the newly created index.spark view page in the views folder for the dinners controller. And what I've done again is just copy the markup from the web forms equivalent, the index.aspx page, into my Spark page as a starting point. So what we need to do is first of all get rid of a good amount of this stuff and set our content to be main content. So this ties in with the master layout that we created in part two, which references this content element uh, that gets injected into the, uh, into the master page. So the contents of that content element become a, uh, an element with the name main content that gets injected into our master layout. Now, to access the view data strongly typed, what we can do is declare that it has a uh, model property of type. Now, let me get this right. Near dinner helpers paginated list. The paginated list is a special type as it's part of the nerd dinner project that is a, a helper class for modeling paginated lists and it's a generic paginated list of dinner objects. So that element there essentially declares that we have a model property on our view data that has type paginated list of dinner and that gives us strongly typed access throughout the rest of the view to that to that model. So again we need to set the page title as we did in the in the other view that we created in the second video and we'll call this one upcoming dinners and again include spark on there just to make sure we know it's the spark view engine that's rendered it and we'll render the title in our h2 tags as well. Now we get to the point where we can really see the power of Spark by representing very succinctly in the markup here exactly what our intent is in terms of iterating over this collection. So let's just remove some of these items and on our list item here we can change the Spark syntax. So for the action link we don't want that to be HTML encoded and for these items we do want them to be HTML encoded so we can simply use the dollars syntax there
So now we have the list item. What we need to do is express the fact we want that we we want one of these for each element in our model. So we can simply say each equals for dinner in model, and that says give me one of these list items for each element in the collection represented by model. So now that we've done that, very neat way to express the iteration over our collection. Let's just fix up the if statements down here. So the syntax is slightly different. We say if condition as previous page, we'll get rid of that. Same for this one. If condition equals as the next page, get rid of that. We need to get rid of these and replace them with closure, closing if elements, and the same here. And then we just need to fix up our root links, changing them to the Spark syntax as well. Okay, let's save that page. Now, in order for us to invoke that page, we need to modify, again, we'll just change the name of the web forms view so that we um, that, that doesn't get resolved and we see the Spark view instead. So let's run that page, or run the site rather, and then navigate to that page. So we view all upcoming dinners. So just quick fixed a couple of errors there. This should have been nerddinner.models namespace. I had a couple of extra brackets in here and I had a typo in my condition here. Let's run again. I that fixed those things. And here's our original page. Click on view all upcoming dinners. And sure enough, this is being rendered by the Spark View engine and it looks identical to the original page. So there we have it. We've had the look at converting another web forms view page to a Spark view and seeing the nice neat way Spark allows you to express that iteration over the uh, the collection uh, to render the, the relevant HTML elements. Again, a whole host more information here. We have my blog posts about Spark. We have the ASP.NET MVC homepage. We have the Spark view engine documentation and homepage, the Spark view engine download and code, the MVC Contrib project, which has a bunch of alternative um, view engines, and the Nerd Dinner project on Codeplex, where you can download the Nerd Dinner sample itself.